Time for round four against Joe Cool. I've gotten the best of him first couple of times I've played him, but it always seems to be pretty close. So, let's see, we're on the draw here. And serviceable, we need a way to cast these white and black spells. He's got a 2 1 that guys get first strike. He doesn't have anything else. I think I'm just going to kill it with Heat Ray. Preserve my life total here. He's got another 1 1. I still can't cast anything. Not going to waste a touch of the void on this. And it looks like he has no fourth land. I draw a tapped white source. So I want to play this Battle Herd on next turn. He's still got nothing. So it looks like I'm playing a 3 3. It's probably going to die. Since he probably has removal. He has Induced Despair. Revealing Vent Sentinel. Okay. Walking Atlas is just a miserable card. Should not be playable. Pilgrim's Eye is very good though. It finds him his much needed land. I got the Felder Cub main here. Probably not the best card. Ooh, Blade Toss Boar. Gonna have to kill that. That's like 3 2 unblockable. And bash for two. Taking one in the air. And a Bloodseeker. Again, another really bad card. But I'm willing to trade two for two because I have such good cards in my hand here. Think about playing the Royal Mages trick. I probably should have. Would have saved three damage. But I know I want to cast this Complete Disregard this turn and then cast a... Sheer drop with Awaken and attack for 5 next turn. So I think Pilgrim's Eye is the best card here. I don't care about this Bloodseeker. I just don't want to get hit for a lot of points of damage in the air. He's got a Tomb Hex though that kills my land. And I'm just bricking off and drawing a million land where I know he has all spells in hand and every land he draws is just off the top. So here, just because I have no gas in hand, I just roll Mage's Trick and I hit Dongler Invoker, which is good. I would have preferred a higher toughness thing. Um, so with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 mana. Uh, with 7 mana, um, oh, here's a bit of a misplay. I should have just attacked with my 2-2 two -two and try to put him down to 6 first. There's no way he blocks, right? So, and then my second main phase, I should play Dawn Glare Invoker, go to 9, and play Tightening Quills on his 4-2. But I do it in the wrong order, which leads him to block. So he should be at 6 and still have that stupid creature in play. But he's got, wow, two haste creatures. So, hopefully he has no removal, because I can activate Dawn Glare Invoker next turn. But if he has removal, then I'm screwed. Invoker invokes. If you have removal, it would be good. Dutiful return is strong. Gets back a 2-1. I can actually just tap it on my turn and hit him for lethal for 4, and that should be game. So yeah. Looks like, again, Donglair Invoker, in my opinion, is the best card in the, in the sealed league because of its ability to exactly do this. It basically, you know, in this sense, it was a five for one. It played removal on five cards as and just provided the beats to win. So, just the best card ever. Oh, we kept, um, I sided in against an aggressive deck, so I put some cards in to help slow him down. I have a 1-3. Blocks is 2-4, just fine. Bash back for 2, have no other play. But I will have a Courier Griffin on 4. He's got, ooh, Tuk Tuk Grunts and this other Grunt. Uh, I'm pretty sure I just want to kill this guy because he could grow to be a 4-4, so I double block. He kills my Courier Griffin, I'm fine with that. I'm missing lands, which is quite annoying here. But I do have an 06 to block. But he's got stone removal. I'm glad he did that before I invested way more mana into that creature, so I'm not that opposed 
to that being super annoying, but I decided to just, again, preserve my life total and just tightening coils this. He plays a battle rap art, which doesn't do anything. Valkant Invoker, on the contrary, does a lot. I do hit a land, and so I think the play is, since he doesn't have access to... S if he had 7 land in play right now, I'd kill the Invoker, but since he does not, I think I'll just play the 3-3 three, three Flyer. That is a little bit more annoying in that now my Heat Ray can only hit for 4, so if I don't draw a land, I'm going to have to Iona's Judgment it. I do draw a land, though, so now I can Heat Ray it. Which also allows me to hit for four in the air. Because he soaks better net, doesn't do anything. But that card's actually quite effective against me. It slows down my beat, so I'm allowed to get in for one damage here. And then just play another flyer. And have Heat Ray for three open. He's got Tar Snare for my guy. I was thinking about that, but this allows my 3 3 flyer to live, which I'm fine with. He's got... Wow, okay. I thought he was like an aggro deck. He's playing 2 mana 2 ones and a bunch of allies. But he plays an 8 mana 8 9. Good thing I have the answer for it. The problem is, is that he can give his guy haste. So I'm going to have to Iona's Judgment it. And play my Prism. And then bash for 4. The problem is that he can give any creature that he has comes into play haste. So... Looks like he top decked. Wow top deck Eldrazi <laughs> Devastator into Heart Stabber Mosquito, two of the best cards in the format. Kills my guy and gets to attack for two. That was a huge swing. Now I'm at six. So now in an effort to be mana efficient, I just play the Wave Wing Elemental and don't attack. Dutiful return. Wow, that's an insane top deck too. This gets a replay Valakit Invoker. Okay. And I can't really attack for that much, so... I draw a land, so I definitely play it and can bash for five. And basically he can chump block with almost every creature he has because of this Silk Spider net. I play my Stonehaven guy, and I have to play the Heat Ray right now on his Valakit Invoker so that my creatures don't get axed. He has a Tuk Tuk Grunt, which is super annoying. Uh, so, I guess I should have thought about this and maybe not attacked with my 3-4, because now I have to go down to 3. He's got 0 cards in hand, though, so I can gain a life. Yeah, so let's see what I draw first. If I draw land, I can attack with Wave Wing. Good. Alright, I would have preferred to draw on, like, um, I think Sheer Drop would have been the best draw step there. Because I could kill his 3-3, three, three, and then I'd have two flyers to block his guy, so he'd hit, and he'd need two removal spells before he could hit me for lethal. But he doesn't even have lethal. But yeah, I draw land, so... I have a couple options. I can wait, not play the land... Try to gain one life and just use my 3-4 to block his 3-3. Three, three. Or I could think my play is play the land, attack for 5. He, th he can go down to 4 or he can chump. And then when he hits me for 3, I gain a life, go to 4 and go to 1 and hope he doesn't draw anything relevant off the top. So I decide to play the land, get in the damage, and he takes it, goes to 4. And... He draws Spire Barrage off the top for exactly lethal. Wow. So that's four damage, and now I can gain one life and go to four. Yep. That's rough beats. So he he top deck like a god. Maybe three turns in a row. I had some of the answers, but that was rough beats for me. So we're on to game three. I love these games, though. How close are these games? And I think I chose draw. This is not the best hand, but certainly serviceable. 
Drawing a land is the worst possible. And he has a 2-drop, but it, luckily for me it's only a 1-1. One, one. I've sided in a few more defensive cards. I just decided to kill this guy just because it preserves my life total. Let's keep track. I want to see how many life total it preserves. So far I saved myself 1 damage. This turn... Uh, this doesn't count as a creature, but I saved myself 2 damage by killing it. Sludge Crawler... Walking Atlas, I'd kill for a shrivel, um, but I don't have the mana to cast it anyway. Gotta play my guy. That's three damage. My guy dies, and I take. I would have taken four. So that's four damage I've saved. So I would have been at twelve if I didn't heat ray the Blood Seeker. So here I just have to tap out for this flyer. Another removal spell. So, I, so that's five damage because of the ghostly sentinel, and then six damage on this attack. Wow. So I'm at eleven, and I would have been at five. Okay. I'm just I wasn't sure if killing that blood seeker was right, um, but I think it was just because my life total is so low now. Spreading Seas, Pilgrim's Eye, okay. I get to finally leave this 2-6 blocker untapped. Here, uh, I'm fine just like blocking like this. Forces him to pump. He, if he has a spell, he has a spell. Again, that attack was completely pointless, but he must not have had anything in hand. Deprive and these lands is not the best. Here, he can pump his guy one to three times to be a 4-4. Four, four. So I kind of have to block the Sludge Crawler. It prevents an ingest, which I'm, I'm likely to hit gas. And it prevents the most potential damage. And it forces him to pump at least twice. So if he has an expensive spell in hand, he can't cast it. But I do have to take three damage, which is annoying. Waving Elemental, all right, that's a good draw. It's going to make really good use of these sandstone bridges. Roiling terrain. Ugh. No attacks, though. Man. You killed my land. Luckily for me, I drew a fortified rampart to help block. So I get to bash for six to leave my 3-4 blocker back and play a wall and still hold open Deprive. Deprive is going to be really good because I'm going to replay the sandstone bridge. Ooh, Teetering Peaks changes the math on the block this turn. Luckily for me, he only attacks with this. He could, he, I guess he doesn't have a free attack on the 3-3 three because three, I could have blocked it with my 3-4. But if I don't block, then I go down to one. And that means he has two lethal attackers out and I only have one creature in play. So that puts me in a position where I have to top deck a a creature and I don't want to be in that position. So I can at least play the sandstone bridge. I'm just drawing lands like a buffoon. And now his only attack is sludge crawler. And he doesn't get the teetering peaks benefit, but he is drawing lands, so he gets to hit me for a million here. So he gets to bash me for five. I go to two. And he ingested a heat ray. Figures. My answer to it. Alright, at least I hit. I hit Closter and Night Watch, and I can still leave Deprive open, but I I can't attack with my Wave Wing, though, because it's not lethal, and he would have two lethal creatures in play. So now I have to fade a removal spell, otherwise I'm just dead. If he's going to only attack with that, then that allows me to double block. I'm perfectly happy to trade one for one here forces him to use his mana for the turn. Alright, now I'm ahead on board with a 4-5 versus his 3-3. Three, three. I'm behind in life, but I have a Deprive, and I'm going to be able to rebuy one of these Sandstone Bridges, which is going to be really strong. And Stone Heave Medic's not, like, the worst draw in the world that can give my Cluster Healer flying. Um, So I still can't quite attack yet, though, but that's fine. 
and he plays Blade Tusk Boar, which is most definitely worth countering. I can only go up to three life next turn, and this creature is unblockable, so it would just kill me. So it is a must counter threat, and I get the Sandstorm Bridge back. And then he plays a 4-3, and he comments after the match, he should have played his creatures in the other order. Uh, if he played this 4-3 first, I potentially have to counter it, and then I'm just dead to his unblockable creature. As it turns out, I would have been safe, and I would have just killed the Blade Tusk Boar with my Touch of the Void that I top decked, because even I can get lucky sometimes too. But I give this guy Vigilance and bash him for 5. And now I still have 2 blockers back, and I'm going to go up to 3 life. So he can still top deck that Spire Barrage, but he's got 36 cards in deck when I only have 15. So he's got a lot of weak cards in his deck, potentially, compared to me having just definitely my best 40, at least what I think my best 40 are. And looks like he draws Eldrazi Devastator, which is not going to be enough. Because I can gain life on my own turn to give my guy flying and then hit for lethal. So yeah, incredibly close game. I um, end the game at four life, and you can see I saved six. I saved six life by killing this uh, Bloodseeker on you know my turn two, his turn three, with Heat Ray, and I almost didn't because I thought I could draw Shrivel right and just kill a bunch of his one ones. Would have been really good too. Would have hit his Atlas and his Pilgrim's Eye, so he would have gotten less value from his Bone Splinters. I potentially could have hit his Sludge Crawler too. If I could have killed that Sludge Crawler, it would have been really nice, and I wouldn't have taken very much damage. Um, would have drawn another Heat Ray eventually there. Um, eight, nine, yeah. I even have 10 mana now, so Heat Ray can kill the Adrazi Devastator. But I think these were some of the closest games that I've had. And uh, forgot to mention it against Zombie Nico as well, but just wanted to say thanks again to Joe and Zombie for playing matches against me tonight. They didn't have to. They both had their five matches were already done for the week, but I only had a couple left, so they were happy to oblige, and I appreciate it. All right, stay tuned for the last round.